storytelling needs to be diverse. To ensure that it is, AT&T has stepped up in a significant way to create the change that is needed. As a leader in entertainment, AT&T enlisted the help of its long-term partner, the Tribeca Film Festival, and its nonprofit arm, the Tribeca Film Institute, to help diversify the voices, to not only get stories made, but get them distributed and seen. Together, we have embarked on a multi-year, multi-tier program to change things for the better. Introducing Untold Stories, an inclusive film program in collaboration with Tribeca that grants $1 million to an underrepresented filmmaker to produce their film. To announce the program, we created a star-studded trailer that played throughout the festival. On April 18th, five filmmakers pitched their movie to a jury, including Lee Daniels, Jeffrey Wright, Anthony Mackie, Frida Torres Blanco, Lena Motto, Josh Deutsch, and AT&T Chief Brand Officer Fiona Carter. A wider audience was granted inside access to the pitch via live stream. Once concluded, the jury, after three hours of deliberation, handed a million-dollar check to NYU Film School graduate Faraday Okoro to bring his dream to life, Nigerian Prince. In addition, AT&T funded four microgrants to the pitch participants and sponsored the three-day Tribeca Film Institute Network event for underrepresented filmmakers. By festival close, Untold Stories generated 31 media hits and 104.5 million impressions, while social and paid media impressions surpassed 27 million. Okoro's film will premiere at the 2018 Tribeca Film Festival, have a theatrical release, and will stream on AT&T platforms, including DirecTV Now. This program, which includes full funding, mentoring and production support, and distribution with guaranteed scale, is unprecedented and life-changing. I want you to hit my boys. I'm the toys for the tail. We're gonna bring them off the line. AT&T and Tribeca Film Festival, Finding the Million Dollar Film, AT&T Chief Brand Officer, Fiona Carter. Welcome. Thanks so much for staying to the end of the day. I know it's been a long day and a hot day, but you know what? They say you should end on a high, so we're going to leave the best for last. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm so happy to be here with this amazing panel to talk about untold stories. I'm going to start by introducing them, and then we'll talk a little bit about what we did with untold stories. So, here on my left, yep, it's Faraday Akuru, our winner. Congratulations. a bit about himself. He was born, brought up in America, but also lived in Nigeria. He's attended Howard University, NYU Graduate Film School. And up to this point, he's been making some amazing short films. They've been screened in numerous film festivals worldwide, including Tribeca, LA Film Festival, and the Palm Springs International Shorts Fest. And he was included in Movie Maker Magazine's 25 Screenwriters to Watch. So we picked a good one. Uh, next to him we have Amy Hobby. Now she's an amazing producer and currently the executive director at China for Films. She's won Emmys, she's been Academy Award and Grammy nominated movies like Steven Soderbergh's and Everything is Going Fine, Secretary with James Spader and Maggie Gyllenhaal, Love Marilyn for HBO with Liz Garbus and What Happened to Miss Simone. <laughs> She's also got an amazing background. She was telling me last night that she's really good with cameras. So she actually, her first experience was with Remy Harlan, Remy Harlan, Remy, right? Yeah. Up there, right on A Nightmare Called Elm Street. She also worked on My Cousin Vinny as a camera lady and as a production assistant. Her first job was on Edward. She told me not to say any of this, but actually <laughs> she was asked to teach Johnny Depp how to use a Super 8 camera. So he's got more, sorry, oh no, that I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> and finally, no introduction needed. He's probably one of the best actors of our generation. Um, so thrilled to have him here. Jeffrey Wright, he's a... <laughs> He's a Tony, Emmy, AFI, and Golden Globe award-winning actor. That means he's only an Oscar away from the EGOT. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> the 
what's amazing about his career is really the eclectic characters and the nuance that he brings to his acting of all of those different characters. You'll have seen him in Angels in America on Broadway and TV. In films, he's been the District 3 tribute in The Hunger Games. He's been Bastia. He's been Felix Leiter in Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. He's been in Syriana, and he was Colin Powell in W, if I can say that properly. Also, an amazing record in um, TV, particularly partnering with HBO, Boardwalk Empire, Angels in America. And I have been trying to get him to reveal season two secrets. <laughs> he will not. He is Bernard, the enigmatic, no spoilers, enigmatic head of programming. Uh, and I'm so pleased that that show got recognized as one of my personal favorites. A ton of Emmy nominations and one for Best Supporting Actor. So Let me set the stage for you on how Untold Stories came about. Uh, I think there's no secret that there's a lack of diversity in filmmaking. Uh, since 1927, 435 people have been nominated for Best Director at the Oscars. 423 have been white, only four have been women. women. And in casting, just over a third of speaking characters in films and TV shows are female, and less than a third of speaking characters tend to be of a non-white ethnicity. Um, and you're probably thinking, so we know that this is an issue, it's kind of reached a cultural uh, point in the last year or so, but what is AT&T doing playing in this space? Well, for us, it's really important. We've got over 140 million customers all across America, and we just truly believe that they deserve to see their lives, their values, their personalities, and their stories on all the screens and the devices that we influence. So we've been working a lot on our advertising, but we really wanted to work on the content and the entertainment that we're beginning to create. And really for us, the perfect partner was Tribeca Film Festival and the Tribeca Film Institute. We've been the sponsor for four years, since 2014, and this year, we just really wanted to take the issue on in a meaningful way. The idea began back in January in a casino in Las Vegas. And yes, tequila may have been involved. Um, I was there with Jane Rosenthal, founder of, uh, co-founder of Tribeca Film Festival and CEO Andrew Essex of Tribeca Film Festival. And we knew that we had to come up with a really meaningful idea for our sponsorship and partnership with Tribeca Film Festival. And we were talking about the diversity issue, and my point was, how do we make a real difference? How do we actually help diverse and underrepresented filmmakers get their films made and seen and distributed? And Jane, um, she's actually often a woman of few words, and she had very few words for me here. It was one million dollars. Uh, and the idea came from that. Why one million? We wanted to not just be a, be a tokenism, but get a film made, produced. And being AT&T, we actually have the distribution platforms out there. We can run it on any device, so you can stream it, watch it, and binge it. And for us, that was how Untold Stories was born. It's not about window dressing, it's not about rhetoric, it's about commitment and action and real impact and making a difference in this area. introducing you to Faraday and I want to talk a bit about Faraday's background. Uh, he told me a wonderful story last night that I'd love for him to share. So we were asking him, when did you know that filmmaking and storytelling was going to be the most important, an important part of your life? When did you have that epiphany? So I'd like to ask him to talk to us a bit about that and then knowing that how important film is to him, what I'm also interested in, second part of the question is, what was it like to sit in front of Jeffrey and Lee Daniels and do that pitch and have it live screened? Uh, so, I, I grew up, you know, watching films, but for the most part they were like, you know, childish sort of films, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Cry a Kid. So, um, when my parents actually, like my main character, uh, will tell you about, when they sent me uh, to Nigeria against my will. Um, you know, I was at a, like, I could consume no media because uh, there's not 24 hour electricity. Uh, so, and there are also like three channels. Mm -hmm. So one day uh, when the power was on, uh, the film Road to Perdition with Tom Hanks uh, mm -hmm. came on. Mm -hmm. And I watched like 30 minutes of it. 
And I was glued. I've never, you know, to that time watched the film that was so, you know, mature and uh, sort of like just ready to go. So, um, and the, the power shut off uh, after 30 minutes. Uh, so I didn't finish it, but it was at that point that I realized, like, no, I'm, I need to watch this, I need to finish it, and I need to watch other movies like it. Um, and that just continued right on until college. Um, at that point, I started collecting, you know, just DVDs. At this point, I had like 800 DVD movies. Um, and I had a friend in college who would borrow my films. And the next semester, he told me he was going to register for a film, intro to film course. And I got insanely jealous. And, you know, I was like, you shouldn't be there, I should be there. So, uh, I, you know, convinced my parents, I said, this is an elective, it doesn't mean anything, and they allowed me to take it. And once I took it, I knew then and there that this was uh, something I wanted to do. Um, and I made, I made up my mind up, and I said I was gonna pursue filmmaking, I was gonna go to NYU, I was gonna make shorts, and I was gonna make features. And so fast forward to the pitch, you had to stand in front of uh, amazing filmmakers, uh, Lee Daniels, Anthony Mackie, Jeffrey, Lenamato from HBO Films. We streamed it live. There were 40,000 people watching live. One, one of the, um, the biggest uh, Facebook live streams up to that point. <clears throat> what was that like? I mean, these are amazing filmmakers and they're listening to you. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, exciting and nerve-wracking all at the same time. Uh, but I've had this film for so long. Uh, I, I can see that when I was in college, and prior to pitching it, um, you know, I've been writing the script for three years and developing it, so I was sort of ready for that moment. And I've been practicing for like two weeks. So. <laughs> yeah, we can tell, you, you, brought, you brought it for sure. So it sounds like this film has been a part of your life for a long time. So why don't you tell the audience about it? I know it's called Nigerian Prince. I'm, I'm sure they'd love to know about it. Uh, Nigerian Prince is a coming of age high schooler which is set in Lagos, Nigeria. It follows two characters, Eze, a first-generation Nigerian-American teenager, and his cousin Pius, who's a Nigerian email scammer. Um, <laughs> after Eze's mother sends him to Nigeria against his will, uh, he joins forces with Pius to scam unsuspecting individuals for a plan to get back to America. We look forward to seeing it. So, Jeffrey, turning to you, I remember vividly another memory from that day. It was such a wonderful day, but you come off a red eye, and you and the rest of the jury had read all of the screenplays. That's what I found so extraordinary, the commitment from you all, and actually our, uh, I've not been on a jury or a green light committee before, but the, um, the debating of who should win went on, I think, way over time, like almost three hours. So tell me a bit about why you were a fan of this film and what intrigued you about the film. Well, uh, I think why it was important for me to <clears throat> excuse me, read the, the scripts, because despite the pitch aspect of the event, <clears throat> films are, are built on the words uh, within a script. The script is the foundation for everything. For me, uh, particularly as an actor, it's what draws me to, um, to a project. The words jump off the page at me, if the story jumps off the, page, off the page at me. If you don't have that, you don't have a film. So it was critical to read, to read those. And Faraday's I found um, uh, to be really wonderfully constructed, um, taught, um, uh, witty, and was shining light on a subject that we're all familiar with but we're all ignorant of. <laughs> and so um, it, it, um, it uh, provided everything I think that we were trying to go for. And I want to say one thing as well, relative to what you're doing at AT&T, what you described um, in terms of this uh, inclusion and in trying to uh, you know, bring about stories from perspectives that are, uh, are neglected um, uh, societally, is that the issue often I've found in my career and as an observer, is that there is an underappreciation of the audience, and there is an, a misunderstanding of, um, of the saleability of these stories, the viability of these stories, and those 
Um, corporate decisions and those folks who are in charge of those decisions are the ones who often misunderstand and misplay the opportunity. And so when I hear that AT&T, which is obviously looking for content for distribution, of course, um, has an awareness that um, there are stories there that they can, using all of their facilities and means and talents and resources, promote, that's the answer. Because the stories exist, the writers exist, the audiences exist. It's just a matter of of of, of using uh, you know, the means to get those stories out uh, to those audiences, and it and it requires that type of leadership. So I, I don't say that lightly. Um, uh, it really is uh, it really is an extraordinary, potentially transformative thing, um, and certainly for uh, for a young film filmmaker like like uh, like Faraday. Uh, uh, fantastic opportunity and a new one and in partnership of course with Tribeca Film Institute it, you know it just all comes together with because film at the end of the day <clears throat> you have this great script but it's about the collaborators it's about you know I always say that the best part uh, about filmmaking is is that it's a collaboration and the worst part about filmmaking is that it's a collaboration <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just depends on you know on who your partners are so um, yeah, so that was what drew me to his script, really, uh, long story short, was, was just the, uh, the craftsmanship within it. Great. Um, Amy, Jeffrey talked about collaboration. What is, we've been working with you for a number of years now, both at festival, but this was the first time, really, with the Institute. You, you live and breathe the festival and the Institute. Tell me what, how you feel about Untold Stories. What do you think it's bringing to the festival? Oh, boy. Um, everything. Um, uh, it was the the pitch was the very first day of the festival this mm -hmm. year, and it was a a, a huge bang. A, it was it was okay. We're making this commitment, like you said. Uh, it, it, all of New York industry and some of the LA industry were there. It was it was front and center, and I think it brought um, this commitment, and not just to you know for years the institute and the festival. Maybe you we can give a twenty thousand dollar prize or a ten thousand dollar grant to a film, um, but that film may take three, four, or five years to actually get finished, and then another year to find distribution. You know, so uh, Faraday scored, <laughs> and that, uh, it, it, was, it was a massive jump start, not to be able to, be able to support the production of that film, um, and to have all of, all of us uh, at the Festival and the Institute, there's a lot of producers, a lot of people with experience to to not that you need our help, but to be there in, in case you do and to help uh, guide that process, it's, um, it's, it was a real game changer. You know, it's gratifying to hear you both talk about that, because for us, really, the core of it was, we noticed there were a lot of brands giving smaller prizes, trying to help some kind of enablement, but we really wanted to make it real, like have, make a film and get it distributed and then make sure people really see it. So it's just, I mean, it's great to hear you guys live and breathe the industry every day. It's great to hear you say that. Yeah, connecting with audiences is, yeah. is really, uh, that part of that is broken and for independent films and this is, was a huge commitment. Mm -hmm. So Faraday, you scored, and you said so. So I think we all want to hear a bit. What What have you been doing with that big check you scored? And it's so funny. I have this vivid memory as well of we had a huge check to give him. You know, a bit like Vanna White at the whatever that picture was. And uh, you, had, you had to carry it around the city, didn't you? <laughs> There's some great pictures on his Facebook. Um, but let's, let's get serious now. What, what have you been doing? I know you're hoping to film in. Uh, Nigeria, you, obviously you've got a lot of work to do. Tell yeah. us, let, let, peek under the hood for us. Well, uh, it's, I'm in pre-production officially now. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> so, well, most recently, uh, I just finished a, uh, a location scout. Um, I actually flew back uh, yesterday uh, from Nigeria right to LA. Um, and I was there for a week. Um, I, ca I found all my locations. I cast uh, most of my Nigerian uh, actors, um, and I'm, you know, working with a uh, U.S. Uh, casting director to find uh, the American roles. Um, you should tell us a bit about. Isn't that casting director pretty yeah. experienced, her, famous? Her name is Amy Kaufman. She's, oh, yeah. Yeah, she's, 
I know. Yeah. I was impressed because A.D. Kaufman has turned down two of my features. <laughs> <laughs> talking about Nigeria, because I think you both have, obviously you both have connections in Nigeria. Uh, I, this is really to either of you. Can, again, can you help us understand what it's like to shoot there? Anthony Mackie, too, and the, on the day was saying, it's very different, right? It's like, can you bring to life what, what it might be like to shoot there? Yeah, it's, I like to describe it as like apples and oranges, you know, they just, they go about filmmaking in a different way. Um, and you know, oddly enough, it's a very productive way. Uh, they make more films uh, than Hollywood. Um, they're ranked second to India. Um, and I've told my crew, you know, we're going to go about it and uh, we'll let Nigeria talk to us. We'll shoot the way they shoot there for the most part. Um, what does that mean, shoot the way they shoot? <laughs> so, so, so for instance, um, the traffic there can be uh, a nightmare uh -huh. uh, during rush hour. Um, LA folks like to say traffic here is a nightmare, but it holds nothing to like, <laughs> like it. Um, so you can be stuck for like two hours, four hours. Uh, the people who, you know, like when we left Nigeria, we left to the airport like six hours, seven hours ahead of time, just in case. So in, in our case, um, we're not going to do a lot of uh, company moves unless it's just taking the equipment and the mm -hmm. actors walking down the block. Um, <laughs> you know, early, go to your location because you know traffic is fun um, uh, and before like six and stuff. So mm -hmm. you shoot what you got to do uh, and then go back to the hotel. Very good. Um, Very good. And also, for instance, like uh, because of the traffic, <coughs> uh, the actors and the crew normally, you know, you just everybody in the hotel um, because you just can't risk someone getting caught in trouble. Very okay. good. Sounds incredible and a crazy challenge and I know Amy's going to help you. Um, I'd love to talk a bit about how you're going to help Faraday but actually make it broader, shine a light on the Tribeca Film Institute because you do some incredible work. So yes. how, how have you been involved with Faraday and what advice have you been giving him? So at the Institute, we support uh, filmmakers from underserved communities year-round. Um, this is our passion, this is wh what we do, and we're tracking those filmmakers uh, constantly. Um, I don't know how we, ca we came about your script, um, but anyway, we, we, you know, we're, we're meeting with these filmmakers constantly, we mentor <coughs> filmmakers, and that can be everything from um, you know, reading the script, giving script notes, reading budgets. We're, you know, we're sort of there for what we're needed for. You know, um, you and your producer Oscar are really quite amazing, I have to say. So, uh, I mean, I learned about producing through making a lot of mistakes. So I hope that um, if I see a mistake coming your way, I can let you know about it. And you can do it anyway if you want. But uh, <laughs> uh, maybe, I, maybe I can help out. So. Uh, yeah, and, and Tribeca in general, Jane Rosenthal, who's head of the Tribeca Film Festival and co-chair of the Institute, and she's been a producer for many, many years, a uh, partner with Robert De Niro, and she has uh, a lot of experience producing films too, so there's, there's a lot of support. There's a safety net. Yeah. It's a good kind of collaboration, yeah. Jeffrey was talking about. Yeah. Um, so, Jeffrey, uh, I've also noticed, I mean, I noticed on the day, actually, all of the, the professionals on the, the panel and the, the committee were offering advice and they felt quite invested, like, you know, Lee, I think Lee Daniels, when you came up, said, make it great, I'll be watching. <laughs> and Anthony Mackie was pitching for a role, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe a younger role than perhaps he should have been pitching for. But no, the, the commitment was extraordinary. Um, and, and, you know, behind the scenes here, I've heard you giving little pieces of advice and help, Jeffrey. So you're an actor, you're, you're connected in the industry. 
Um, do you have words of advice? Have you been helping Faraday? Talk to us about that. Oh, Faraday hasn't uh, hasn't uh, called me yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A couple rolls in there. <laughs> um, no, I think you know, going back to uh, the deliberation after the pitch, you know, I mean, we took it very seriously. Yeah. Because it's a you know, it's not a, a, a not insignificant amount of money. You know, mm -hmm. some might describe it. It's a small amount of money, a small loan, never mind. Um, but it's not, it's a not insignificant amount of money. And it's obviously for Faraday, um, you know, a potential life changer. So we took it very seriously. And I think, um, yes, there's a, there, there, there's a desire, obviously, for him to succeed. So we, um, we, um, you know, we were, uh, we were and are supportive. I would say one thing, though, or a couple things, maybe. Just as uh, a young director, um, and this is to anyone, is that um, film is storytelling. <clears throat> it's about communication. And likewise, directing is largely about communication, not only through the medium, but also uh, on the set in terms of communicating the vision to those collaborators that will be working with you toward realizing it. Um, and communicating to your actors. It's about leadership at its core. Um, and so that's not to be forgotten, that it's not just about this kind of nebulous <coughs> idea of making a film. It's about leadership. And, um, and don't be an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Some directors think that that's a yes, <laughs> Not at all. Um, it's about it's about building a, a fertile, challenging, creative, efficient environment um, and leading the charge. So um, that's my, uh, that's your my two cents. My two cents to add to your one million. <laughs> <laughs> and as an actor, I've I've often wondered, do you what do you require from your director? Do you have a vision already that you want to play out and test and try in your acting? Or are you looking to them directly to give you notes from the very beginning? For you specifically, what's, or do you, you just work with all kinds of directors? Well, um, it's a collaboration again. It's a meeting you know, in, in the middle. So, um, I like to think that I can bring things to the table and to a performance that the director doesn't see mm -hmm. or hasn't seen, hasn't um, predicted. So like to realize what his, ex his or her expectations are and then go beyond them. And likewise, one of the most important things for me as an actor is having a director who sees more than I can see because I'm performing. So and, you know, when you're performing, you're always watching to some extent with this, you know, with this external eye. You know, you're observing it because you're not just out there doing anything. You want to, you know, try to anticipate to some, some extent how the audience is, perceive, uh, is perceiving what you're doing. But you can't see everything. And the director's watching you. So you like to hope that the director can see more <laughs> watching you than you doing it. It's not always the case. Um, but the director who really uh, is able to help you, um, uh, you know, optimize what you're trying to do, the story you're trying to tell, the character you're trying to bring to life does. And again, communicates with clarity um, what, what, what he thinks you need, he or she thinks you need, and what, um, and what his vision is for the larger, larger story. Um, having that vision and communicating that vision <clears throat> is everything. Okay. Clarity. So I, hopefully you can see here that uh, Faraday is not only supported financially, but he's actually supported with real professionals and wisdom from the industry. Um, and the kind of collaborations that, that's the right kind of uh, collaboration, um, that's really at the heart of untold stories. We want new filmmakers to get their stories made. We want to help them to be the very best they can. Um, so to that end, we're really excited that we're going to be looking forward to finding another untold story for 2018. Uh, we did announce at the end of Tribeca Film Festival that this will not just be a one-off, but we're going to do a year two. 
Um, we really want to hear from all diverse filmmakers with a story to share. Um, so I'm pleased to say submissions for next year's Untold Stories will open on September 6th. So you've got all summer to polish up that submission. You have eight weeks to submit until November 6th. And if you go to tribecafilm.com forward slash at and Untold Stories, you can send the submissions our way, and we're desperate to overwhelm Amy and her team <laughs> with thousands of submissions this I year. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we have the backup to read all of these, but yeah. what has been wonderful actually is at and Tears have been putting their hands up going, I would love to help you screen the, the screenplays. Um, so I, I think that shows how invested um, we all are. But please, uh, directly out to you guys, send us your submissions. Um, Amy, you're going to be at the forefront of Untold Stories too, because you're going to be one of the first to see all of these. Tell us a bit about what you're hoping for year two and how you see the program evolving. Um, I, I think uh, for year two, well one, as you mentioned, we're going to see a lot more scripts, um, just because of the profile it had, the success of the festival. Uh, mm -hmm. I also hope that we'll be able to support now, I don't like to think of winners and losers so much. I mean, you were the winner. Um, but the other four projects um, that also pitched were, were also providing support, and, and AT&T gave them development grants. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of those projects, forever even longer, is uh, Lee Daniels came on board as an executive producer and is being developed into um, a television series. So um, mm -hmm. the, the idea that we can support more and more of these stories each year is really exciting for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the more of these stories we can get uh, distributed and connect with audiences, the, I think the better for our society. Yeah, I, I personally have a great heart for female directors. So I was talking to... <laughs> Yeah, I had a chance to meet um, Patty Jenkins at the AFI Lifetime right. Achievement Award. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the chance of the Lifetime Achievement Award was for Diane Keating, who's such an, an extraordinary actress, and you know the, the love in the room for the female talent was really special. But uh, so I have great heart and great hope that we'll uh, we'll find some amazing female directors out of this too. We, they really need to get a chance. I remember Jane telling me that they'll get the first chance, but it's really hard for them to get their second film. So that's an area. We, we hope to um, focus on moving forward. Um, Faraday, back to you. So, uh, how, how would you advise uh, any, pro uh, any filmmaker who's thinking about participating, participating in a program? It probably seems daunting to them, so you've been living it. What words of advice would you offer? I, personally, I would recommend uh, folks to submit when they're ready. I know, uh, you know, Tribeca receives all sorts of uh, applications, some production ready, some not production ready. Um, so to, to definitely submit when you're ready. Um, and I think, for instance, when I was uh, pitching, uh, a lot of your questions I was able to answer because it's been in my, my mind for like, you know, for years. Mm -hmm. I've heard every iteration of sort of these questions, so, you know, I was ready. Jeffrey, you were asking some difficult questions of all of the. Uh, <laughs> you were, you were. <laughs> um, what's your advice for filmmakers thinking about submitting for this year? Um, well, again, uh, first, the script is everything ish. It's, it depends until you get to the pitch. But it's, <laughs> the script is the key. Uh, I think it's great advice to submit when you're ready, you know? Um, and, and you know, these things can't be birthed until they're ready. Um, I have to make a determination when that is, but um, that's great advice. Um, I would say as well that one of the things that we talked about was the ways in which the scale of the script conformed to the uh, funding that was available. Um, there were certain films that were uh, maybe a little ambitious just in terms of logistics. Um, that, uh, that that's a consideration to make. But that doesn't mean that you can't be creative um, in, um, in, in filming it. Um, for example, I just did a film uh, with a female director um, 
uh, who shot in a maximum security prison in Indiana for about a million ish dollars, um, largely with incarcerated men in the cast, uh, uh, my co stars and colleagues. Um, but we used this real environment um, to create uh, uh, you know, the effect of a much larger budget film. But we, you know, we were limited to, uh, to really less than a million dollars when we were, when we were filming. And that's an extreme case. But if you can be creative in that way to stretch the value of that million within the story that you're telling, I think that that's, uh, you know, that would be pretty wise too. But yeah, just, um, you know, and, and again, you know, a story that, um, that should be seen but hasn't been seen. I don't think there's any way of anticipating where those stories will come from. But just don't be afraid uh, and don't be reticent in thinking that your story is not um, is not saleable, or that your story is not viable, because that's another danger to this. And I've seen it happen with with friends of mine that we, we become discouraged that our stories aren't valuable, mm -hmm. and it's absolute nonsense. So don't give in to the, give in to that temptation or to that trick. Any other questions on the panel? Any, any other words of advice? Well, what, what I was going to add to that is, um, along with the application, you submit a script, but you also submit an artist statement. And, and from that, we asked, you know, why are you the person to make this film? Why, why this story? Why now? And why are you the best person? Um, so, um, you know, that's so we can see the passion, um, uh, where the story's coming from, you, you have some experience, you know it's not what really happened to you, but that's, it was the start and the heart of your story. And I think that's really important and that's the type of stories we're looking for. Um, and I agree, they need to be production ready. Um, uh, I've been producing films, I don't, you know, my films, they just, the budgets just don't seem to be going over two million. But, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, can, I can spot that. I've become good at saying like, I think they can figure out a way to do this. or. Um, don't submit a, uh, you don't put in your artist statement, you know, uh, I'm still working on a draft, you know, I'll get there, you know, like all these things, don't use the artist statement as an excuse, as, as a pile of excuses. We just want to know what, that you're ready to go, that you've been thinking about it, that it's a story that's very important to you and that you have great passion for. It. And I think that's what solves these stories the best to us. And you talked about selling the stories. My observation, actually, Faraday did a really great job of living and breathe, breathing the movie he wanted to make. He really got to the heart of the story really quickly. He, I mean, he had the elevator pitch really, really down. And you know, he's talked about why, because he worked on it for three years. But yeah, my observation as a, a marketer and an advertiser, we're, we're pitching and selling every day, um, is actually I think we could help the filmmakers learn how to pitch the whole project, how to sell it first. Um, trying to get to the heart of the stories and making it saleable, I, th I think are skills that don't necessarily come directly with being a filmmaker, right? Your storytellers, um, your artisans. So, you know, I'd love to see us actually perhaps helping those filmmakers that get down to the shortlist. Maybe they can do like a, I don't know, a masterclass with Faraday about how to win. <laughs> uh, always working on ideas about how to improve it. Um, as you can tell, it was really a um, it was a really magical experience. Certainly for me, I don't think we realised what a gem we had until we were there on the day, um, and then I think it, it it brought back it brought a lot of emotions both for the uh, the actors and the producers that were a part of the panel. I think it took them back to uh, when their careers first began and how they were trying to get projects um, kicked off. Um, and it was such a, a wonderful day full of emotion. I have a personal memory. Uh, we announced the winner and Faraday stood up and he was hugged his producer. He was clearly flabbergasted. There were, there were no words and he came up to accept the very large check. And he came by the co-founder of the Tribeca Film Festival, who's Robert De Niro. And Robert De Niro is a, he's a quiet, reticent man, um, a wonderful man, but he's quiet and reticent. And he stood up and he gave you a hug. And uh, do you remember that? And it was there. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 I mean, that, 
that is a that is a magical moment right there, and to to have been a part of that um, was really amazing. So I just my final question for all of you really is, um, what was your best memory of the most memorable part of this experience? Should we start with you, Faraday? Did I steal? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I remember it so vividly because you know he he was there early and you know like. Only, I'd say, folks in his sort of like, you know, A-lister sort of vibe would, would even think about talking to him. Um, and I was just in my chair hoping I'd win. Uh, so when they called my name, and he, you know, he's positioned right there by the podium. Yeah, he was. And, you know, I was just walking, I was like, oh, he's there. And, you know, he, he extended his hand, I was like, oh, wow, let's just shake his hand. And then he, he gave me a hug, and I was like, oh my god, he's also hugging me. All right, I did steal your best memory. <laughs> Amy. I don't have anything to talk that. Uh, my, my, my favorite moment of the day was when um, there was a green room, which was at a movie theater, and you guys were all back, all the teams were back there. Um, like kind of rehearsing their pitches, getting ready, but also bonding with each other, right? And I thought, oh, this is this is great. This is like a, a sense of community, and everyone was going through the same process together. And um, that was my favorite moment, just being in that room with all the teams together and seeing the, the collaboration and the, the good spirit. Yeah. Okay. Jeffrey? Uh, most memorable moment. Um, hmm. See, well, aside from uh, trying to finish all those scripts on the red eye back from Calgary um, <laughs> uh, that morning, um, was probably, I guess, you know, the moment when 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 we knew that Faraday had, had had won this thing, but when it was announced and the reaction of uh, of his partner, uh, producing partner, you know, uh, because again. Um, it's not a, you know, a token gesture. It, you know, they, they won this thing, and what it implied was you know, work to do, you know, uh, a journey to go on. You know? so, so, so the significance of that was really wonderful. That yes, we won this thing, great event, but now you know, it means you know, we, we push forward. And that was just fantastic to see you know, the realization on their eyes and, the, and, and what it meant to them. Yeah. That's well said. Um, the, I love the Tribeca Film Festival. They've been amazing partners. And they put on an amazing event, and you're all West Coasters, but come East Coast and experience it for yourself. This, this year, they had a wonderful, I think it was the closing night, it was uh, The Godfather 1 and The Godfather 2, um, with the entire cast together. Uh, up at, I think it was at Radio City, and I remember, to underline Jeffrey's point, I remember saying to Faraday, you, you've got to come to that. that that's like a film student's dream. And Faraday said, I can't come. I've got a film to make. <laughs> <laughs> so just to underline his work ethic, I think um, we're thrilled that he won. It, it's, it's an incredible script. It really is a story that I don't feel that I've ever seen before. We can't wait to see the movie. We're premiering it at Tribeca Film Festival next year, so I hope you'll all come. And if you can't, you can watch it on your mobile phone, on DirecTV Now, on DirecTV, on at and um, We will make sure that you can see it everywhere. Um, but his story is not the end. It's going to continue. Um, I'm so grateful to this new panelists for taking the time on a Saturday. I'm grateful for the work that you do. you all please submit your stories we want to read them and we want people to see them um, remember tribecafilm.com forward slash at and untold stories we will read them all and one of them is going to win another million dollars thank you all thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rate this session using the Shape mobile app.